Well, welcome and good morning. It is good to be with you. Um, if you're visiting us for the first time, whether you're here for the first time on campus or if you are online today, you should know a few things. Firstly, you should know that you're welcome. You should know that you're loved. You should know that you are safe. But you should also know that God is well pleased with you. That God is for you, not against you. Certainly our prayers this morning continue for those families and communities grieving the loss of a child, of a parent, of a grandparent, of a family member to gun violence. Our prayer is for action, for reform, for change. And we pray for the thousands of migrants and refugees traveling to our U.S. border this morning, fleeing poverty, food insecurity, war, violence, climate shocks, for that traveling child. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. It was Friday evening in downtown Los Angeles, and we were entering this all-you-can-eat seafood restaurant. It was a celebration for all the hard work we had just completed. We had just served over 5,000 people at our annual back-to-school event at the Mission. Several thousands of families, families that were living in poverty, were served. In the group was a young man. His name was Janil, 18 years old from Colombia. He had no history of drug addiction. He had no abuse of alcohol. There was no gang affiliation, no criminal record. He was just a regular 18-year-old kid who spoke only Spanish, had this really big smile, this real positive energy about him, but somehow ended up in the streets, houseless, hungry, afraid. He entered the mission where I was serving as the pastor at that time, located in the Skid Row community of downtown LA. But little did I know that when I accepted this role to be the mission chaplain of this mission, that my life would be altered, that my core would be rocked. Because I encountered this presence, this flow, shall we say, that revealed to me that God was everywhere and that God was in everyone. You know, Janil left our program three months later, back to Colombia. Later, he became my friend on Facebook. Years later, he sent me some photos of his wife and his new daughter. Of course, there was still this big smile, this real positive energy that just was coming through, through the images. But I see, I tell you this story this morning because I made a decision a long time ago that I was going to move away from the center to the edges. And that when I would make that move from the center to the edges, that there I would discover individuals like Janiel, who simply needed a welcome, support, some food, and some shelter. But there, in that place, in that moment, is where I discovered a new truth, a new revelation, shall we say. I've titled today's sermon, Would You Like to Enter This Flow? Today's wisdom derives from John's Gospel. We just read it in Hawaiian. Thank you for doing that. And it begins with this cryptic message from Jesus that I'm just going to quote it here directly from Jesus. Jesus says these words, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. 
See, these words from Jesus are evidently pointing to the disciples and their lack of understanding. Or shall we say they were unprepared to hear what Jesus was about to say to them. But Jesus does give them some direction. He does tell them that the Spirit of the truth, the Holy Spirit, comes and will guide you to all truth. And goes on to assure the disciples that the Spirit of the truth will take what is His truth, Jesus' truth, to them. But He doesn't stop there. Jesus continues. He clarifies a bit more. He says that all of the Father's truth is also in Him. What is going on here? What's with all the clarification about the truth and where it comes from and how it's going to be shared and how we're going to respond? You see, it's my belief this morning that what the reader is confronted here with, all these words about the Spirit, about the Father, and about the Son, that it's this shared truth that Jesus is telling his disciples about. Can you see the sense of this Trinitarian God in this passage? You should be aware that today is Trinity Sunday in the Christian calendar, a day that is kept since the 10th century as, as a special celebration of the mystery of the Holy Spirit, the Father, Son, Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, who was, who is, and who is to come. And yet I wonder, why does the church only celebrate the Holy Trinity on this Sunday? Why not celebrate it every single day? Why not live with it every single moment of our lives? And I think here is where we encounter the wisdom this morning. I think here is where I would say to you, be fully present. You know, God said to Moses, when you get to the top of the mountain, be there. Well, that sounds redundant. Of course he was going to be there. But I think what Jesus or what God was trying to say to Moses is be all there, all present. Because if we're truly seeking truth, if we're truly seeking the Spirit, then this is the moment to be fully present, to be fully in the moment. Because here is the wisdom this morning. The wisdom is for all of those who are seeking holy truth. For all of those who are interested in in joining a flow, a dance, a healing, a reconciling power. For those who are thirsting for more discovery of the holy truth. And here it is. The more we draw closer to the triune God, the more truth is revealed to us. You know the term Trinity, Trinitarian, it doesn't appear in the Bible. The ancient Greek fathers, they depicted God as uh, this word, a Greek word. It was, it was a Greek word known as perichorosis. Perichorosis, which meant a, that God was this round dance. Chorosis is where we get the word choreography from. Peri means around. So to dance around. So the early fathers identified the divine God as this community of love which the members and persons of the divine would move and encircle each other in loving, giving generosity and service. Did you hear me? This was the essence of orthodoxy, central to the Jesus story, because God is not static. God is a flow, a dance, shall we say. And you and I are invited into this flow, into this dance. However, see, it's my impression that much of Christianity, much of the American Christian church has not grasped this totality, this uh, understanding of the flow, that it has not fully worked out the significance of the Trinitarian flow. As Christians, we have a term for this, we call it revelation. Have you ever heard of that? Revelation is a process. It is a journey. One does not offer the most advanced theories to students when teaching them new mathematics. 
One does not provide the most complex scriptures to seminary students when teaching them hermeneutics and exegesis. Similarly, God's revelation to his disciples is developing, evolving, progressive. It's this progressive process. And perhaps the revelation given to the disciples is all they were ready for. Perhaps our amount of truth obtained is limited. Maybe we can only grasp as much as we can understand. Perhaps our revelation is limited because it is all we can bear right now. Or perhaps we have limited God's revelation, believing that all of God's revelation has already been revealed. But man must remember there is no end to God's revelation. I know some people who believe God's revelation is solely in the Bible. But of course, if this was true, then that would mean that God has ceased from speaking some thousand years ago. This would mean that there is no more revelation. But I'm here today to tell you, my beloved, that the Creator, the Redeemer, the Sustainer, they are always active. God is always revealing God. And this is precisely the work of the Spirit to reveal to us truth. Because truth is something that already exists. It is already present in the world. But without the Spirit, without the guidance, we pass it up day after day, hour after hour. Truth is simply waiting to be discovered because behind all truth is the divine, is the community of love, the members of this community moving and encircling one another in loving, giving, generosity, and service. You see, I guess what I'm saying to you this morning is that truth is already in this world. It's already being revealed. But that truth, in many ways, you know, it's interesting, the spirit of truth, and Jesus wanted everyone to know that the spirit was essentially bringing the truth of his, of Jesus, but ultimately it derives from the Father. So it's probably safe to say that all truth is Trinitarian truth. But that the more we get to know this Trinitarian God, the more that is revealed to us. That the more we get to know this Trinitarian flow, the more truth is revealed to us. But you still have to step into the flow. You still have to commit your ways for the Trinitarian ways. You still have to commit your plans for the Trinitarian God's plans. You see, it can't be disconnected. Commitment and revelation, it goes together. It goes hand in hand. Concern is too many people don't want to submit, don't want to commit. They want all the revelation. They want all the truth. But you can't have it without commitment, without submission. And this is why I say to you, my impression, again, is that the American Christian Church has not grasped the totality of this flow, of this dance, they have not worked out all of its significance. But hear me this. It's not a question about do you believe in this flow. Listen up. It's not about that. It's not about am I good enough for this flow. Or it's not even what do I need to change for this flow. The true question is, would you like to enter this flow? Because this flow is healing the world. This flow is reconciling the world. This flow is salvation. This flow is the cosmic hope for the world. When you move from the center to the ages and stand in solidarity with those who have been harmed and killed by gun violence, you enter the flow. When you descend from the top to the bottom to serve and care for, the, for our houseless neighbors, you enter the flow. When you speak up, 
for communities that have been othered, not accepted because of the color of their skin, because of their language, their immigration status, their sexual orientation, or their economic tax bracket, you are entering the flow. When you give yourself up for something bigger than yourself, you are entering the flow. You see, this flow has come to announce, to shout, to proclaim that the whole thing, history, society, planet, humanity, all creation is being made new. It is all being put back together. The whole thing is being healed and reconciled. Do you want to enter this flow? You see, I do. I do want to enter this flow. Because Jesus, who rearranges everything, who is the cosmic hope and salvation of the world, who died on a cross, took our shame, our failures, mistakes, transgressions, and gave us his forgiveness, his successes, and his righteousness, and resurrected on the third day, giving us the greatest statement of reality, the final chapter of reality, the omega point of history, gives us liberation and salvation and it washes over us it washes all over us this morning i mean what shall we do with such liberation with such grace with such salvation perhaps the only authentic response is to allow ourselves to enter into the flow and receive new truth and receive new revelation from the Holy Trinity. And that with that knowledge, with that truth, with that revelation, we would go out into this world and intentionally participate in the ongoing healing and reconciling of all creation. You see, oh, Spirit of Truth, we ask that you come down to us this morning, that you would speak to us, reveal to us your truth. Let us be caught up in this flow that goes beyond us, that is healing us, reconciling us, healing and reconciling all creation. We need your revelation in this time. We need your truth. We need your spirit. We need your flow. How else will you be the savior of this world? Teach us to listen. Teach us more about your flow this morning. Word of God and word of life. And we all say together, thanks be to God.